Traoré shocked France again with a new ban on French TV stations. Ibrahim Traoré is a strong character who remains unwavering in his resolve to lead in a world where influence and power can breed jealousy and dishonesty. A struggle between deceit and truth breaks out as rumors of lies and defamation reverberate through the political corridors. Traoré meets the attack with unyielding tenacity, aware that progress is fraught with difficulties. He stands tall in this dangerous environment, ready to confront those who would damage his name. This resilient leader is prepared to face any challenge and will not let the flood of lies defeat him. In today's video, we will delve into the world of Ibrahim Traoré, a man ready to face his adversaries head-on, armed with truth and an unyielding spirit. We will also explore some of the media outlets Traoré has suspended due to their frequent spreading of lies. But before we continue, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel to get first-hand information on what is happening in Burkina Faso and Africa as a whole. Recently, Burkina Faso suspended the French broadcaster TV five for six months for spreading disinformation. The communications regulator, CSC, accused the channel of spreading malicious insinuations and disinformation about the country's transitional government. Additionally, TV5 was fined 50 million CFA francs, approximately $82,000, the media outlet faced criticism from the communication regulator for featuring Newton Ahmed Barry, who headed the election commission from 2014 to 2021 and was critical of the military regime. This suspension is part of a broader effort by Traoré to maintain stability and truth in the face of foreign influences and internal challenges. To understand the broader context, it's important to recognize the tensions between Burkina Faso and France, with accusations that France is stirring up protests in the country. Several foreign news outlets, predominantly French, have faced temporary or permanent closures since Captain Ibrahim Traoré took over Burkina Faso in a coup in September 2022. The military government suspended BBC and Voice of America in April after they broadcasted a Human Rights Watch report accusing the military of executing civilians. Additionally, TV5 was suspended for two weeks the same month for similar reasons. The Human Rights Watch report alleged that the army had killed over 223 people in areas suspected of collaborating with militants, including 56 minors. International media outlets like the Associated Press extensively covered this story. The suspension of these major news outlets significantly reduced the BBC's ability to deliver independent and accurate news to the region. Despite the suspension, the BBC vowed to continue reporting on the area in the public interest maintaining a stance of fearless and impartial journalism. Furthermore, the Burkina Faso authorities ordered internet service providers to block access to Voice of America, BBC, and Human Rights Watch websites and digital platforms. This crackdown on media is not an isolated incident. Burkina Faso has previously shut down French radio and television channels and expelled correspondents from French newspapers. The suspension of TV5, therefore, did not represent an exceptional episode, but rather a continuation of a broader trend. The transitional government also suspended all media distribution associated with the French news outlet Jeune Afrique as of September 25th of the previous year. This action followed an article on the Jeune Afrique website alleging growing discontent within Burkina Faso's military barracks. These measures reflect the government's effort to control the narrative and reduce the influence of foreign media, particularly those that criticize the military regime. In May, hundreds of Burkina Bay protested outside the U.S. Embassy in Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, reacting to Washington's response to the Human Rights Watch, HRW, accusations against the country's military. HRW had accused the military of executing civilians, which led London and Washington to jointly urge Ouagadougou to thoroughly investigate these alleged massacres and hold those responsible accountable. The protesters, comprising shopkeepers and private sector employees, marched towards the embassy mid-afternoon, chanting anti-imperialist slogans and waving Russian and Burkina Bay flags. The embassy was guarded by police in riot gear. Mahamadou Alago, spokesman for the Liberation Federation of Pan-Africanists, which organized the demonstration, questioned the role of human rights defenders during terrorist attacks on their populations. He said, We have come to deliver a message to the Americans to put an end to these accusations against our armed forces who are defending the country at the cost of their lives.
The situation in Burkina Faso highlights the difficulties journalists face dealing with both government censorship and the challenge of covering national insecurity. The director of the reporters, Without Borders Sub-Saharan Africa Bureau, SBU Morang, commented in April that these suspensions were another blow to press freedom in Burkina Faso. He raised concerns about what would be said next and how the situation would unfold. On the other hand, some support the suspension of these news outlets and TV stations, believing that they often exceed their reporting bounds. Amidst this tension, the military regime in Burkina Faso has announced it will extend its rule for five years. This decision came under an accord adopted during national consultations. Colonel Matalo, the leader of the organizing committee of the national dialogue process, stated that the transition's duration is set at 60 months, starting on July 2nd. This extension of the military regime's rule further exacerbates the already tense atmosphere in the country. The ongoing conflict between the government and foreign media, along with internal protests, underscores the complex and volatile nature of Burkina Faso's current political landscape. After the transition period, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the current leader and acting president of Burkina Faso, will be eligible to compete in any subsequent election. Under the new charter, quotas will no longer be used to allocate assembly seats to members of traditional parties. Instead, patriotism will be the sole criterion for selecting deputies. Originally, the charter stipulated a 21-month transition period to civilian administration, ending on July 1st. However, Traoré has frequently warned that holding elections within this time frame would be challenging due to the unstable security environment. The decision to continue reporting false statements made by newsmakers is often justified by news outlets and TV stations as newsworthy. This defense is similar to how social media corporations use free speech to justify the dissemination of misleading information. Such arguments overlook how our minds work. People often accept claims that align with their pre-existing beliefs, regardless of their accuracy. When they encounter these assertions, they tend to exaggerate, remember, and share them with others. Careless reporting cannot be offset by occasional fact-checking. Evidence does not support the notion that news organizations' fact-checking significantly slows the spread of misinformation. When uninformed individuals do fact-check, they rarely change their opinions. The most effective strategy for news organizations to counteract misinformation is to reduce their input. The shift of news sources to social media has made it easier for false information to circulate, as anyone with a social media account can create their own news outlet. For individuals and news organizations, attracting as many viewers as possible is usually the goal of airing news. Social media trends favor posts that provoke outrage rather than well-researched news. False information is often distorted by out-of-context elements, and the share button enables the rapid spread of misconceptions among a wide network of people. Ibrahim Traoré is trying to curb this trend. On social media, false information can proliferate up to 10 times faster than true news. Corrections to explosive false posts never receive the same attention or credibility. When a false post goes viral, a subsequent correction is not as captivating, memorable, or loud as the initial fact that drew in listeners. In a competition between a factual but dull narrative and an exciting but fake story, the interesting story wins. Social media content is driven by an algorithm designed to keep users online for as long as possible, showing more personalized advertisements targeted at them the longer they use the platform. This business model powers all major social media platforms. The algorithm selects what content to show next based on information about the user such as the types of content they have liked and shared in the past and the content creators they are most likely to interact with. This strategy aims to keep users engaged and on the site longer. Posts similar to the ones you like and share will continue to appear. However, the suspension of TV5 raises significant concerns about press independence and the flow of information in Burkina Faso. Upholding the principles of free speech and the public's right to unbiased news is essential, even though the administration claims that the suspension is necessary to protect national security. In an era where knowledge is crucial for shaping public opinion and holding those in power accountable, governments must foster an environment that promotes free speech and information sharing. The leaders of Burkina Faso can implement several measures to ensure that TV stations exercise more caution. Firstly, the government should review and reform media regulations to make sure they are fair, transparent, 
and in line with international standards. The Superior Council for Communication, which regulates media operations, should act independently and provide advance notice for its decisions. All final decisions should be subject to appeal before competent courts to ensure due process. Secondly, Triore must ensure equal treatment and protection of all news outlets, regardless of their nationality. It is advisable to avoid discriminatory actions against specific foreign media outlets, such as the suspensions of French media networks. Burkina Faso should also take proactive measures to protect media personnel from threats and acts of violence. There has been a rise in violence against journalists in recent years, whether from the government or armed organizations. Leaders should denounce such behavior and ensure that those responsible are held accountable. Moreover, media outlets must make every effort to verify their facts before disseminating vital information about the country. Only through rigorous fact-checking can there be a reduction in the dissemination of false information, which is critical to maintaining calm in Burkina Faso. These suspensions have sparked debate about whether other TV stations and news outlets will exercise more caution or continue from where the others left off. It's an open question whether these suspensions will lead to more responsible journalism or if the cycle of misinformation will persist. In summary, while the suspension of TV5 raises important issues regarding press freedom, it is vital for the government to ensure fair and transparent media regulations and protect journalists from violence. Equally, media outlets must uphold high standards of fact-checking to ensure the dissemination of accurate information. This balanced approach is essential for fostering a healthy and informed public discourse. If you have thoughts on whether other TV stations and news outlets will become more cautious due to these suspensions, share your opinions in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so you get notified whenever we upload videos like this. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.